good morning. It's great to see everybody today. Just want to welcome you to worship with us. If you're in here in person, we're glad to have you. If you're watching online, we're glad to have you as well. Um, just a few things I want to remind you of today. We are going to be observing the Lord's Supper together. Um, so you should have received one of these uh, prepackaged sanitary cups as you walked in. And just keep in mind that there are two layers, okay? The first layer, there's a little piece of plastic where you get your wafer out of it. So make sure when you're, whenever later on we're doing this that you, you, you make sure you're doing that. You don't miss that because that, it's easy to grab both layers at the same time and just get the juice. Uh, but the wafer's in there as well. So keep an eye on that later on when we do that. Um, if, you're, if you're watching online, if you want to need to pause the video and go ahead and grab your supplies for that, please do that as well. I um, just want to remind you, uh, we are reading through the Gospels together right now, reading some good news together. Uh, and we're reading through uh, you know, Matthew right now, and we're going to move on into the rest of the Gospels after that as well. Um, I do want to mention, last week, I, I forgot to mention it, but uh, we've got flowers again in the sanctuary. And it's just a beautiful thing to see here. Um, and so this week's flowers are in memory of Glenn and Louise Sermons, and they're given by Miss Glenda Williams, Joel, and their family. Um, and then also, you can give online. We're still doing that, still giving online if you need to do that. If, if, if you want to give in person, we've got a box back in the back as you're leaving today or as you're coming in, you can just drop that in. Um, and with that, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand. Go ahead, stand up. Stand up. And, and stay where you're at, okay? But do like we did last week. Just turn around and wave and smile at somebody and tell them how glad you are to see them.
Luke chapter 22, verses 7 through 13. Then came the first day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. And they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you enter the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room. Prepare it there. And they departed and found everything just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. Join me in prayer, please. Lord, it's just so good to be in your house today. We're so thankful that we get to come back and worship with fellow believers, Lord. And we just ask you to prepare our hearts, Lord, to, to cleanse us before we take this Lord's Supper. That we don't forget the sacrifice that you paid for us, that ultimate sacrifice, Lord. We just thank you so much for that. Now, I ask you to be with Pastor Lyle as he brings us your message today, Lord. And just um, give us the hearts to hear what you're trying to tell us. I ask you to be with each person that's on our prayer list, Lord, and there's, there's many, and you know the needs of each one, just touch them. And we ask you to forgive us where we fail you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand again. We still got some more singing to do. Let's go. <laughs>
Most gracious Heavenly Father, in your house today, we have already sung praises unto you, Father. We lift them up. I hope that we will worship you this morning, Father. We will partake in the Lord's Supper as to what you told us to do. Be with Pastor Lyle as he guides us through this and his devotion that he brings forward to us. Pray for all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But would you be finding your place in 1 Corinthians 5? 1 Corinthians 5, and I'd like to share a few devotional thoughts with you this morning in verses 6 through 8 as we prepare to worship this morning in receiving communion and observance of the Lord's Supper. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, let's read verses 6, 7, and 8. So the Apostle Paul right in here says in 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 6, Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover also has been sacrificed. Therefore let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for an opportunity to gather together as your people. I thank you, God, for those who have come this morning in person. And God, I thank you for those who are joining us online as we worship together as a church. And Lord, this morning, during a time when we seek to follow your ordinance, Lord, I pray that this morning you might uh, take your word and uh, instruct us so that, God, that uh, we might uh, reflect upon the things that we ought as believers. Lord, that our hearts might be right before you. So, Lord, that we might uh, worship you aright. And, uh, Lord, that we might take this bread and this cup in a worthy manner. And so, God, I pray that you would guide and direct the further scenes of this service. And, uh, Lord, would you have your will in your way. And whatever is accomplished will give you the praise and honor and glory for us. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Uh, you know, this earlier this week, uh, during his Sunday school lesson or Monday school lesson, as it's been called as of late, uh, Dr. Bennett challenged his class from the Scriptures to consider Christ above all. And you know, that ought to be our very posture and position when it comes to times of worship, especially as we seek to obey the Lord's ordinance, to receive communion, to share in the Lord's Supper, and how that ought to feed into our everyday lives, to consider the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has done. Not only what He has done uh, for us, but remembering that who He is, that He is uh, the Son of the living God. He being the one who came to give His life on our behalf. And, you know, thinking about that uh, premise of what it ought to mean for us to consider Christ above all in our daily lives, I believe was uh, demonstrated so well yesterday as we laid to rest a dear member of this First Baptist Church and how that very thought, Christ above all, was exemplified in the life of Hal Hobbs. And so this morning as we come to this uh, time when we would receive communion, we would share that as the body of Christ that we truly would recognize the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, reflect on who He is and remember what He has done on our behalf. And so, doing that this morning, I would challenge us to remember, as the Apostle Paul has instructed the church in Corinth here, to remember that Christ Jesus, our Passover Lamb, has also been sacrificed. And so, pausing this morning to remember what Christ has done for us, look into the cross on which... He did that great work. I want us to look now back at the text and see what God's Word would instruct us. And so if we would apply this morning what the Apostle Paul says to the church in Corinth, then he would first instruct us to toss aside our sinful boasting. Notice that Paul says there, your boasting is not good. He says your boasting is not good. Now to understand what Paul is referencing there, you would go back and read the first few verses in that chapter 
you would see revealed there that there is a gross immorality, some open sin that is being tolerated within the church in Corinth. And what is so disturbing to the Apostle Paul is not that the sin is only being tolerated, but that it is being celebrated. Paul says it is something even that the pagans, unbelievers, won't even tolerate in their midst, and yet the church in Corinth is bragging about it. They're celebrating it. They're celebrating how open-minded, how accepting, how non-judgmental they are. And Paul says it's time to stop your bragging. God is not impressed with your open-mindedness where sin is involved. And you know, sadly, in this day and time, we are aware of many once conservative Bible-believing churches who have become open-minded and tolerant and accepting toward what God calls sin. And you know, the fact is, many don't simply tolerate it, but they now celebrate it. But you know, those churches didn't become that way overnight. And it should serve as a warning for us in conservative Bible-believing churches that we ought to regularly take time to stop and reflect, take an inventory of our own lives and see if there's anything that God's Word calls sin that perhaps we not only tolerate, but maybe even personally celebrate our open-mindedness toward. Paul says your boasting is not good. And so when we stop to consider what Jesus did on the cross to atone for our sins, it should cause us then to toss aside our sinful boasting. But it should also cause us to throw out any sinful practice. Notice once again what Paul tells them further in verses 6 and 7. He says, Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? He says, Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover also has been sacrificed. And so uh, Paul is saying there is time for the sin to go. If it's allowed to stay, it is going to spread like a cancer. It is going to cause decay in the whole body. And that is speaking of the individual and the corporate body of believers. Now I would say the Corinthians understood very well this concept of, of leaven as it is used in the baking of bread. You know, they would keep that small lump of dough, that small portion of leaven in reserve to incorporate into a new batch of dough in order to make it rise. And, and we understand that yeast is contained in that small bit of leaven. And when you take that small lump and you knead it into a fresh batch of dough, then slowly that yeast begins to multiply and spread out in all directions. And so then by the next morning, you have a batch of dough there that may have doubled or even tripled in size. And so when the believer or the body of Christ is compared to a uh, loaf of bread, then the best and only course of action is to throw out that old leaven before it has a chance to get mixed in with the new. You know, in fact, Paul, as he is uh, further instructing the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, Paul tells them this, that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And you know, that cannot be a reality in the life of a believer, cannot be a reality in the life of the church, if even the smallest bit of sin is tolerated, let alone celebrated, because it will eventually bring decay and cause destruction within the whole body. And so then Paul continues here. He, he takes this opportunity then to remind the Corinthians of, of what the Passover is in relation to the crucifixion of Jesus. When he says, for Christ, our Passover has also been sacrificed. You see, during that very first Passover in Egypt, the Israelites ate the unleavened bread. The one reason they did that was because they didn't have time to wait for the bread to rise whenever God said it was time to go. But secondly, it was to be symbolic of the new life that they were going to live. Each Israelite home at that time sacrificed that unblemished lamb they painted the blood above the doorpost. And so that night, as the death angel passed over those homes, the lives of the firstborn were spared. And so that innocent lamb gave his life so that they might begin a new life, free from the bonds of slavery that they were in in Egypt and free from the sinful practices of their old way of life. 
there in Egypt. And you know, that's exactly what Christ sacrificed. His crucifixion, His death on the cross did for the Corinthians, and it's what it does for you and me. And so as we reflect upon what Christ did for us, it ought to cause us to toss aside our sinful boasting. It ought to cause us to throw out our sinful practices. And thirdly, it should cause us to take up a sincere walk. Take up a sincere walk. Notice again verse 8, where Paul says, Therefore let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Celebrating with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. It signifies living a purified life. A purified life. Not just once a year when it was time to celebrate Passover. Not just once a quarter or once a month or once a week whenever communion is celebrated. But if the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, if it would cause us to toss aside our sinful boasting, to throw out any sinful practice, then ultimately it should cause us to take up a sincere walk with Him each day. Now this does not mean that we will live sinless lives. It doesn't uh, mean that at all. But it means that if our hearts are sincere, then our desire will be always for the truth. We'll desire the truth. And you know, those who walk daily in sincerity and truth, then uh, they will live purified lives unleavened. The Scripture says from the old leaven of malice and wickedness and immorality. And so this morning in a moment as we prepare to take the bread and drink the cup representing the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus, remembering Christ's sacrificial death on the cross to make atonement for our sins, then my prayer is that each believer who is taking part in the worship service this morning would toss aside any sinful boasting, throw out any sinful practice and take up a sincere walk before the Lord. You know, Paul instructs the Corinthians in this way and he didn't intend it to be taken lightheartedly. In fact, he tries to teach them that it is a very serious matter. When he gets over to chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 27 and 28, notice what Paul says there. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 27 and 28. He says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink the cup. And so with that in mind, what I'd like for us to do in the next few moments, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, is enter a time of uh, silent prayer, personal reflection, and self-examination, so that each one who is able may take the cup and eat of the bread in a worthy manner. Let's take a few moments to do that this morning, right where you are.
So now as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, we would invite each one this morning who has publicly professed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has been baptized to share with us in communion. And again, I would remind you that in your cup, for those of you who are joining us in person this morning, the small film that is on top of the wafer, please be aware of that. You may go ahead and prepare that at this time. Now again, from 1 Corinthians, beginning in verse 23, Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Ron Drew, would you pray and return thanks over the bread representing the body of our Lord? Most gracious and heavenly Father, This little piece of bread represents your body, shed for us, for our sins. Father, help us when we take of the bread to remember this, knowing that your life was a sacrifice for us, freely given as a gift. Yes. And you directed us to, to also direct people to you in discipleship and learning passing the gospel will help us to do this also father pray in jesus name amen Amen. and so jesus said this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me may eat the bread And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Ron Drew, would you, I mean, Ron Hutchins, would you please pray over the cup? Let's pray. Oh, dear God, thank you, God, for this awesome opportunity, God, to get here. Celebrate God and remember that awesome sacrifice and the precious blood of Jesus to shed on the rugged cross, God. Truly, God, by, by his wounds, God, we would heal. And by his suffering, God, and his death and resurrection, God, we would be blessed with the forgiveness of sin, God. Just help us to go and remember, God, that this is so. Why we celebrate today, God, is a celebration of remembrance, God, of the precious blood of Jesus. Always through his precious name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ron. So Jesus said, Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You may drink the cup. So I'd like for us now to conclude our service this morning with a song. And when our services are concluded, I will be available uh, for Bradley or one of the deacons if you need to share a decision that you have made in the worship service this morning. Let's all stand.
Well, amen. You can be seated for just a second. Thank you again for joining this morning. If you're here in person or online, we, it's always a pleasure to be able to, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to uh, follow that ordinance of uh, the Lord's Supper together. So it's just a special, special thing. Um, we'll just remind you, as you're leaving today, if you will take your, your leftovers, if you're here in person, take your leftovers from the cup and the juice, or the juice there, and there's a trash can on the way out if you'll take care of that for us um, as you're leaving. And with that, let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you so much for this day. God, we just thank you for who you are. Lord, as we think on this morning about the sacrifice that you made for us, Lord, let us not forget that. Lord, let the Lord's Supper be more than just something we do at church. Lord, help us to remember who you are and what you've done for us every single day. And Lord, let us live in such a way that others see you in us. And Lord, that others want to be a part of, of what we have. And Lord, give us the, the words to say and the things to do, Lord, so that we can point them towards you. And Lord, again, we praise you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to worship together this morning. Be with us as we leave here. Keep us safe. Keep us in your will. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, just wait till the usher comes and they'll let you know when it's time to leave. <laughs>